And in After Effects, you don't have anything built in that does that. There are shape layer repeaters, but they don't give you all the kind of controls that you need, and I wouldn't be able to blend them in difference mode as easily. So I'm gonna have to build a very simple rig here. And I wouldn't be able to blend them in difference mode as easily. <laughs> okay, I've had my fun. Joey, you know I love you. I am not digging on you at all. Everybody should go watch Joey's full tutorial because it's a really great solution to a very specific problem inside of After Effects, and I think Joey just did an excellent job. Just while watching the video myself, I had my own thoughts of how I might approach this problem, and I think that I came up with a pretty elegant solution for creating a radial offset rig using a single shape layer, and I've also put this into a preset that you can download along with the project file. There's a link down in the description. Let's take a look. All right, I've set up my comp exactly the same way that Joey did. We've got a 1080 by 1080 comp with 30 frames per second, and I just put a black solid in the background so that we don't have transparency. Let's start by making that perfect circle by double-clicking on the ellipse tool, and I'm gonna go to the properties panel and just size this down maybe around 200 pixels on the X and Y. So in our shape layer, we'll call this circle. We need to add that repeater, which is under this add menu right here. So if I make this a little bit bigger, we can see the whole list. We've got all kinds of shape layer operators and other types of shapes. Let's add the repeater and that will put it right after the ellipse group. So what this is going to do is make a certain number of copies based on the property copies so we can control how many copies and offset each copy by whatever transform properties we adjust in here. By default, it's just doing 100 pixels on that X axis, but I don't actually want to offset the position, I wanna offset the rotation. So let's zero out that position and all seven copies that I have in that circle are existing in the exact same place. What I wanna do is go into the ellipse group into that ellipse path, and there's a position property specifically for this shape. This allows me to offset the shape independently of the shape group. So the group isn't changing position, the layer isn't changing position, just that circle. You can see the anchor point is still in the center of that layer right in the middle of my comp. So let's just move this up and I'll collapse the group and we'll take a look at the transform controls for the repeater now. The rotation, if I increase this, all of those copies are now going to be radially offset by whatever value I put in here, each one by 47 degrees at this point. And this is where it gets really exciting, what gets me excited about expressions, because we can set this up to be extremely efficient and much easier to control. So we're gonna add an expression to this rotation property, and it's not gonna be that complicated at all. We're gonna use the expression pick whip, grab the copies value, so the number of copies that we have from our repeater, and let go. After Effects will automatically give us an expression that references that number of copies, and we just need to change it a little bit. So we're gonna go into this, hold Control or Command, and use your mouse wheel to scroll in to make that bigger. And I just need to add a little bit of math at the beginning. I wanna take 360 degrees, so 360, and divide it by the number of copies, which is what this line of the expression represents. If I apply that, now we're going to get a perfect radial offset for a complete circle, 360 degrees, with any number of copies. As I increase or decrease this, it's always going to be radially offset to make a perfect circle where every circle is offset in equal amounts. So just like that, we've already made this much more efficient to use. I can take this a step further and add a slider control, which is just an expression control. It gives us a number value that doesn't do anything on its own. And if I just change this to say 10, then I can link the copies value using that same expression pick whip directly to that slider, and now I can control that value right up in my effects controls. So let's call this copies, and we'll just increase that to something larger again. And let's go back into the ellipse controls and find that position property right here. This is what's controlling how offset it is from the center of the comp without having to account for any kind of scale or anything like that. So we're just gonna put this at some value, but I'd also like to be able to control that up here as well. So let's just duplicate our copy slider and I'll rename this position offset and we're gonna link the position value to it as well. So I'm gonna, again, alter option click on the stopwatch. And this time, because this property is an array of two values, we have to write our expression in an array to target both values. So open square bracket, and then we're going to just type in value, another open square bracket and say zero. And what this means, let me zoom in on this so you can see it easier. This is going to take the value of the property this expression is applied to, so in this case, the position, and because I put another square bracket with a number inside of it, it's saying which of these two values within this array should we use? 
Zero is the first value in an array. After Effects counts from zero, then one, two, three. So X position is zero. So in our expressions array for the first value of the array, we wanna take whatever value we've already set here which in this case is zero. I honestly could have just said zero and that would have been just as easy, but this way if I ever need to change that value for some reason, I can. Next, we need to define the second value in the array, so I'll separate it with a comma, and this is where we're going to link it up to this slider. So again, grab that expression pick whip, select position offset slider, After Effects fills all that in. I just need to make sure to finish that array with a closing square bracket, and you can see the green highlight showing me this belongs to the opening square bracket at the beginning of our array, which is perfect. I'll click off to apply it, and now I can control that position offset up here in my effect controls, just like the number of copies. Now, what if we wanted to change the radial offset so that we could animate it kind of unfolding? That's also not that hard to do. Let's add another control. This one is an angle control. Drag that out and we'll call this rotation offset. Again, this is an expression controller. So it's just a value. It doesn't give us any result until we link expressions to it. It's just giving us our values in degrees so that we can link this up to an angle rather than giving us just a standard number. So let's go back down to our first expression, which is this 360 divided by the number of copies. And instead of 360 degrees divided by the number of copies, I wanna make that dynamic with this angle control. So let's select that 360 and replace it with the expression pick whip to the angle that we set up here in our effects and presets and that's going to fill out the rest of the expression. I'll click off and our copies go away because the angle is set to zero. But as I increase this, it's going to give us that kind of unfolding look and we just need to get that up to 360 degrees to complete the circle. And because we can keyframe this, we can animate it. So let's add some keyframes on that rotation offset. I'll press U to isolate that keyframe and we'll back this back down to zero. And now that's gonna animate out. We add some easy ease, jump into the graph editor, increase the influence of both keyframes. And now we've got something that looks a lot more smooth. If we wanted it to come from the top instead of the bottom, we just need to invert this position offset so that circle is offset upwards instead of down. And now it's gonna come out like that. And we could also animate the size of this shape just using the properties panel. So let's set a keyframe for the size at the second keyframe here for our angle. We'll just add a keyframe on the size and then go to the beginning and turn this down to zero. And then we'll do similar easing. Easy ease, go in, increase the influence of both of these and play it back. And now those circles are going to grow out at the same time as they spin out. Now, one thing that Joey did say at the beginning of his video was that shape layer repeaters wouldn't be able to use the difference blend mode to make all of those intersections. And that's what caught my attention. I immediately jumped into After Effects because I thought I was going crazy. I thought for sure this is something that you could do. And yes, you absolutely can. And no disrespect to Joey, I love seeing different techniques for doing the same thing. In this specific case, it's not going to be as flexible as his where you could make independent changes to every single copy because they're all on individual layers. And in Joey's defense, he had a commenter asked why he didn't use this specific technique, and he had a really great response. Essentially, Joey followed his own intuition and attacked this problem in the way that made the most sense to him, and that's something that I love about After Effects. You can solve problems in so many different ways. But if all you need is perfectly replicated shapes, this is going to work out just fine. So what I want to do is increase the size to be much larger, so then now these uh, circles are overlapping. And if we just take a look at this section right here of our shape group, Shape groups have their own set of blend modes, just like the layer itself does. If I turn my blend mode switch back on, you can see all of the layers blend modes. Groups have the exact same thing. So if I go into here, I could choose the difference blend mode, and it's going to give us that exact same kind of spirograph effect. And it's all being done on one single shape layer. So from here, you could recreate Joey's animation exactly the same way. It's very trippy. You could increase the number of copies to be something crazy. And After Effects can actually handle it pretty well. It's not taxing my machine all that much. But with just a few simple steps, we've created a very simple rig with controls that make everything really easy to edit and animate. And you can download this for free. There's a link down in the description. That's it. Thanks again, Joey, for the awesome tutorial. Go watch it, everybody, if you haven't already. Download both of our presets and have a fantastic day.